happy new year guys i hope this year will be much better for all of us i want to thank everyone who recently subscribed and those who have been watching the channel for a while we've reached over 100 subscribers so i'm really thankful and grateful for all of the support with all that said let's get straight into this video which is going to be about snuffles in rabbits Snuffles is a common term used to describe the upper respiratory infection that affects the nose, throat, lungs and the overall chest area. It can also affect the eyes and ears too. It's caused by bacteria, mostly Pastorella and Bordetella, but other bacteria may infect as well. The symptoms may appear similar to a human's common cold, however, bunnies do not get colds and if you notice any of the following symptoms, then most likely they are suffering from an infection. Look out for frequent sneezing, also called snuffles, hence the name, which can be occasional and due to allergies. I will make a separate video on allergies in rabbits in the future and if you don't notice any other symptoms, it's probably just sneezing due to allergens such as dust. But if the sneezing appears to be constant and excessive, then that's a symptom of a developing infection. Watery or weepy looking eyes as if a rabbit has been crying. Rabbits do not cry. Runny nose with either clear or white discharge. Clear thin watery discharge often indicates an earlier stage of an infection which will develop into a thicker white mucus discharge as the infection progresses. Stained fur on the front paws and cheeks may be the first symptom that you notice. Bunnies will use their front paws to wipe the discharge from the eyes and nose. The fur will appear matted and crusty. Difficulty in breathing is often accompanied due to the nose being blocked with snot. You may notice they start to breathe faster and noisily with possible wheezing and snoring. An occasional snore is nothing to be worried about but if it's paired with wheezing then that's a clear sign of snuffles. Drooling is an indication that your bunny is struggling to breathe through their nose and is trying to breathe through their mouth. Rabbits are nose breathers and should not breathe through their mouth. Loss of appetite and weight loss can also be an early sign of the infection. Rabbits have huge appetites with constant need to eat and keep the digestive system moving. If you notice their appetite has decreased and they are losing weight, or worse, they are refusing to eat altogether, they are definitely unwell. Being lethargic or having less energy, especially at the most active hours of the day, which are around sunset and sunrise, indicate that they're not feeling well. Skin sores can develop around the nose and eyes from the constant irritation due to runny nose or watery eyes. Head tilt, which is also known as wry neck, appears as your rabbit is holding the head at a 90 degree angle all the time. Sometimes bacteria can travel to the ear canals, leading to an ear infection and messing with the rabbit's overall body balance, which causes the head to become tilted. In very severe cases of snuffles, the bunny might develop abscesses anywhere on the body which look like swollen pus-filled holes. This is due to white blood cells trying to fight off the bacteria, leading to death of the surrounding skin tissue. Sudden death can happen if the infection has progressed to the very advanced stage and has not been diagnosed for a long time. Rabbits tend to hide any symptoms of being unwell. That's why it's especially important to be on the lookout for all of these symptoms on a daily basis. Pastorella actually naturally lives in the airways of most rabbits and does not cause any harm to them. The bacteria will only attack if the immune system becomes weak. The compromised immune system can occur due to stress in the environment which can be directly linked to an inappropriate housing and its poor cleanliness. An existing disease or condition, direct contact with the infected rabbits or indirect contact through items such as footballs and air can all contribute to the cause of snuffles. If you notice any symptoms and you suspect they might be snuffles, do not hesitate and take them to the vets. Respiratory infections are serious and can be life-threatening without the medical intervention. Remember the earlier you spot the signs and the quicker you act, the better the treatment outlook and the faster the recovery. Depending on the severity of the symptoms, the treatment will include administration of oral antibiotics via syringe that you can do at home. The vet might take a blood or discharge sample from your bunny for testing in order to determine which bacteria is causing the infection so they can prescribe the best antibiotic to fight it. If there's a discharge from your rabbit's eyes, the vet might also prescribe some antibiotic eye drops. The antibiotic treatment can last anywhere from few weeks to few months, depending on how well your bunny is responding to it and how advanced the infection was to begin with. It's very important to finish the entire course of antibiotics, even if you notice significant improvement, to avoid bacteria becoming resistant. 
since antibiotics can really throw off your bunny's normal digestive flora with an increase of the bad bacteria producing toxins that can lead to gut stasis, the vet might prescribe some probiotics as well in order to protect the gut and promote a healthy digestion during the antibiotic course. If your bunny has discharge coming from the eyes, the tear ducts can become blocked with bacteria. The vet might want to clean them by flushing them with clear saline solution. Since this treatment requires caution to avoid damaging the tear ducts, your bunny might have to be sedated for this process. The vet may choose to prescribe a nebulizer that will help to clear the airways and improve their breathing. In order to cure the head tilt, the vet may also prescribe some neurological medication. If the abscesses have formed, surgery will be required to drain and remove them. If they have been present for a while, some skin tissue could be dead or dying and will also have to be removed. Sometimes more than one surgery will have to be performed in order to remove all the abscesses. In case of severe difficulties with breathing, your bunny will have to be hospitalized and given oxygen. Once the breathing becomes more stable, they will be given a fluid drip to support the breathing and digestion on top of other medications prescribed. If the vet feels like a rabbit might be in pain, they might prescribe some anti-inflammatory pain relief for a short period of time. Besides medical methods of treatment, there's other at-home practices that can really help with the recovery. First and foremost, snuffles is highly contagious, so if you have more than one bunny, make sure to separate the infected bunny from the rest until they have completely recovered. Place them in a warm, stress-free environment to allow them to recover safely. Keep them away from any drafts and make sure the temperature stays the same throughout the treatment. If you feel like they're having trouble keeping warm, check out my video on that link above to see how you can help them. Keeping them and the environment clean at all times will also speed up the recovery. Make sure to deep clean and disinfect all of the toys, blankets, litter box and bowls that they have been using and continue to do so daily whilst they're recovering. This will decrease the number of bacteria in the environment and prevent further attacks. If they have a nasal discharge, you can use a small damp cotton ball to gently wipe it away. One more thing you can do is brew a fairly strong chamomile tea for your bunny. Either put it into the normal bowl to drink willingly or syringe feed it to them. Chamomile is kind of like a natural nebulizer which will help them to breathe and also has a calming effect that will make them more comfortable. Adding natural dry chamomile onto the hay can be beneficial too. As you can see, the treatment is extensive and the best thing to do is to try and prevent snuffles in the first place. There are a few things that you can do to minimize the risk of infection occurring. These are fairly simple and include keeping them stress-free and happy, rabbits are social animals and keeping them in groups or pairs or just spending a lot of time with them will ensure they're happy. Making sure that the living space is spacious and clean. I really promote free roaming on this channel as it's a much better alternative than hutches or cages, which can be difficult to clean properly. Free roaming makes your bunnies happier overall and therefore healthier as well. If they're free roamed, ensuring that the litter boxes, blankets and bowls are cleaned regularly will prevent fostering bacteria from infecting. Feeding them a healthy diet which should compose of 80% hay, 15% fresh vegetables and herbs, 3% rabbit nuggets and 2% occasional treats. And finally, making sure they always have access to fresh water in a bowl. There is no guarantee that snuffles will not return after the complete recovery, so ensuring that you follow these prevention measures will pay off in the long run. I hope you guys gained some useful information about this infection. If you enjoyed this video, please comment, like and subscribe. The next video will be a highly requested one, so hit that notification bell to turn your notifications on to make sure you don't miss it. If you want to connect with us even more, follow us on Instagram at snowythebunny14 for some cute snowball content and I'll see you all very soon. Bye!